There's a tricky aspect to shooting a common type of approach these days that can have serious consequences if you don't catch it. Let's have a look as we fly our G1000 equipped Cessna 172. We're on an IFR flight inbound to Marion County in South Carolina. We're currently flying this segment of a Victor Airway on our cleared route at 8,000 feet. Approach is going to now tell us to expect the RNAV into runway 22 starting from UBAX. Let's pull up the plate on four flights so we can see what we're working with. Then on the PFD, we can hit PROC to pull up procedures. Then enter to select approach. We see the approaches for our destination and scroll down to RNAV 22 and hit enter. We were told to begin from UBAX, so we scroll down and select that. We can bug the decision altitude for this LPV approach, which is listed on the plate as 400 feet. This will add a bug to the altitude tape so we can visualize the minimum. And we'll just load the approach for now. We were told to expect the approach. We're still supposed to be following our cleared route though. Going over to the MFD and hitting FPL, we could see the route as well as the loaded approach. If we push the FMS knob in to bring up the cursor, we can scroll down after the destination to see the loaded approach. UBAC, CROI, root code, and so on. Right away, we're gonna get our full approach clearance. Turn left direct UBAC's cleared RNAV 22 approach. That's it, we're still pretty far out. How did we get an approach clearance so soon? And also, what altitude are we supposed to go to? This approach is a terminal arrival area, TAA approach. We could tell this by seeing the segmented areas of the circle on the approach plate instead of the usual minimum safe altitude symbol. It's a way for ATC to issue an approach clearance far out and let us worry about altitude restrictions. So what are those restrictions? First, we need to comply with the instruction to go direct to UBAC, so we activate the approach. Then we need to determine which segmented circle applies to us. It's all based on our course to the fix. That leftmost circle segment says it applies for courses to UBACs from 153 degrees counterclockwise to 043 degrees. Our track is 162 degrees, so we're not quite inside that area. Let's look at the segment on the top right. It applies for courses from 153 degrees clockwise to 293 degrees. Be very careful though, it's for courses going to CROI, a different initial approach fix. We're going to UBAX. We need to figure out our bearing to CROI then. We'll also want to know our distance from CROI as the altitude restrictions apply depending on how far we are from the fix. Distance can be done informally by using the ruler function on ForeFlight, but let's find both bearing and distance using the G1000. Over on the MFD, we hit FPL, then scroll to CROI and hit the direct button just once. It shows us bearing 161 to that point. This puts us within the segment of the upper right, so we can descend to 2300 within 30 miles of CROI. We're now a bit over 40 miles from there, so we need to wait and maintain our last assigned altitude of 8000. You can see how easy it can be to just assume we reckon our distance off of UBAC since that's what we've been cleared to. But if we were to descend when passing within 30 miles of UBAX, we'd still be more than 30 miles from CROI and we'd bust altitude. So we'll keep an eye on our distance from CROI. We don't need to get this too exact. We have what's considered a pilot's discretion descent. We can be at or above 2300 anywhere within the 30 mile ring. We don't need to begin our descent right away as if instructed to descend and maintain that by ATC. So when we look over again and see we're within 30 miles of CROI, we can begin the descent. We'll bug 2300 as our new altitude, reduce power, and now there's two ways to have the autopilot execute this. We could push VS for vertical speed, then push down a few times to set the feet per minute, or we could push FLC and push up or down to set the desired speed in the descent. Like we said, we're pretty far out, so you could wait to do this descent if you want to stay higher longer, or do it as soon as you're within the 30 mile ring if you want to try to break out below the clouds early. We've been given our approach clearance, so there's really nothing else for ATC to tell us, and they may just tell us to change to advisory for the non-towered airport pretty soon. The TAA approach enables ATC to sort of get rid of us quickly instead of having to issue a series of instructions. We level off at 2300, then check out distance to CROI. When we're within 15 miles, we can go down to 2000 feet. We see that we're 14 and a half miles out, so let's bug the new altitude to 2000, reduce power, and establish a descent. CROI has a hold in lieu of procedure turn depicted. The segment shows that no procedure turns allowed here. Will the GPS turn us straight in or have us hold? 
We can confirm by looking at both the approach path on the map and looking at the approach sequence on the flight plan. We're going straight in just as we should. The approach database knows that we don't do the hole when joining from UPAX, so it was omitted. From 2,000 feet, we're going to join the approach course segment from UPAX. The autopilot is following the GPS guidance, so it'll turn us on the course 153 towards Ciroy. We don't want to activate approach mode on the autopilot just yet, though. When we cross Ciroy, we turn inbound on the approach course of 223. When we're established inbound, we can descend to our glide path intercept altitude of 1,700 feet. When we level off at 1,700, we're ready to intercept the glide path. So we can now go ahead and arm approach mode, which shows glide path GP mode armed in the top status bar. When the pink diamond on the glide path indicator comes to center, we reduce power and configure for the approach. We're going down to 400 feet, and you can see the DA bug on the altitude tape. When it comes up, we can have a look up, disengage the autopilot, and transition to a visual approach to the runway. More and more GPS approaches are incorporating this TAA configuration, especially at airports that are a bit more out of the way. Get familiar with the peculiarities like how to determine when to descend when cleared because ATC won't offer that information, though of course you can always ask. Make sure you're staying current on all the changes to instrument flight as we have them incorporated in our online ground schools which you can check out right now at the link here or in the description.